All right, so now that we have physically seen that it does pretty awesome on the water, I no longer regret spending the money to put that motor on, and I have a lot more faith that this boat will do what we need to do. It actually flies, moves across the water. It's pretty choppy out there. The wind was just picking up, and it moved through it pretty seamlessly. I mean, for it only being a little 16-foot boat. I, I wasn't really wanting to invest any more into it if it wasn't going to work. So, now that we know it will work, let's start. Let's start doing some things. For one, let's start polishing up this hull because it has problems. Clearly, it's it's oxidized to death, and I have bought a series of compound to fix that. And also the seats. Those seats, they gotta go to. All right, this is what we got. We have the Drillmaster, like, special, like, orbital, orbital buffing thing. That was, like, fairly inexpensive. What was expensive is the compound that you have to use. You can't get away from getting expensive compound. It's just not some Compound is compound. And then, uh... We got a winch strap to replace that super oxidized winch strap that's gonna blow away anytime. Then we have buffing pads, the bonnets. I mean, we got gloves for Richard's delicate hands. And then anything else that we may need to polish, we have. We're gonna get onto it. Hey, now we have a basketball. We could probably compete in the weekend warrior tournament now. Man. <laughs> they got to acknowledge us as legit. What is it? This is old two stove oil. Oh, ew. Is it gonna come out? Oh yeah, that is all two stroke oil. We might need a little bit of chemical on that. Hold on, what are you using? Try cleaner wax first, right? You got a cleaner wax? Hey, what's that? Rubbing compound. Well, I wanna know if I would use rubbing compound like right away. Let's see if we can get it up with cleaner wax first. Or restoring wax, yeah. Try it. Start with a clean, dry surface, yada, 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 shape on a well, apply. So if restoring wax don't work, then we definitely have to use rubbing compound. It's pretty far gone, but I don't know. It's been a while since I, people say to wet sand, this is pretty much wet sanding. That's what wax is. Yeah, it's wet and it's got grit in it. It's like pretty much wet sanding. Let me see. Buffin, buffin, buffin. All right, so let's see. Diz. Well, maybe if we buffed it. What do you think? Do you think if we buffed it, it would be all right or no? Like clearly it took off some of the oxidation, but it's not. What if we got that orbital buffer out here and did it? Yeah, I know this is the way we don't blow out our elbows. And so this thing lasts one job, right? <laughs> one job is all it's gotta last. Oh, on. <laughs> It was already on. How do you turn it off? Okay. Yeah, let's do a real. Uh... Yeah, it's not terribly clear, but. Well, that, well the rubbing compound, the whole thing is like, we're having a pretty good chance of digging right through the paint if it's if we don't need it. So it's worth it to hit us a few times with this just to be safe. Like, where's they had orbital sanders back in the day before they had those buffers that were just gigantic grinders? <laughs> yeah, just try and wipe that and see what it did. Because if it, if it still looks like, because it's looking all right, but it's not really getting down to the nitty gritty deep. So maybe we have to use rubbing compound. That's not so much thicker than I thought it was. Look at the difference, you can see the... Yeah, you can see a big difference, all right. Com rubbing compound it is. You probably do that, and then we'll hit that. Because that should bring everything back. No, that's the other Well, you should go down, it's, it's, like, it's like going down sandpapers, like yeah. the 220 to 600 to 1000, and eventually get a nice shiny polish. So yeah, eventually we have to use the regular wax. So there is a shine to it. It's starting to look okay. It's not gonna be like perfect, but in terms of what it looked like before, like it was a giant sack of shit, we're turning looking pretty good. Huh? What was that? Transducer. Oh yeah. That's gotta go. Do you think that was like state-of-the-art technology everybody's bragging about back in the day? Oh, I'm sure at one it point was when like, someone bought this boat, this was the pinnacle. It was like the thing to have. Boat.
quick. I didn't think we would get it to be look this good, no, personally. I didn't think it would look this good. It looks like the bottom. See it? No, it looks like And we haven't good. even done the bottom yet. Dude, it looks like a brand new boat. Do you, do you want to buff this or are you just going to hand buff all that? I'm just going to hand buff her out. So this is how it's looking, looking pretty good. We pretty much got, we we're able to restore the top to, to the original, like how the bottom is. We got very, very close. It's like, you can't tell the difference. Obviously when you look inside, you can tell that there's a little harder to polish the inside with all the curves and stuff. We were kind of bent out, like we blew our elbows and ourselves out trying to polish all this. So we'll get in there and get some more of these hard to, to reach areas, but they're definitely much more tedious and hard to get to. It's a good start. They probably just come off completely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Polished up the outboard too, got that thing going. And I kind of like, at that point in time, my elbows and hands and joints really started to hurt from the, the really serious amounts of rubbing you had to do. And I kind of gave up. Like the outside strip and then the bottom here, which we didn't have to do near as much work as we had the top, because the top was like super oxidized. Now we got a lot of the top done. I started giving up around these harsh areas. We never did treat that with chemical, but he was right, that stuff needs chemical to get whatever that is out so i got some degreaser we'll be putting that in there and then i'll be tech tackling that nonsense but we don't have to deal about with two stroke oil nonsense ever again because now we got this thing this beast the 60 bigfoot but yeah we got so much more work i have a whole newfound respect for boat detailers really you guys detail like million dollar 40 foot boats i can't even handle this little 16 foot like bass boat like this is too much like i gave up like richard and i we were like we were we were going through this and we like right at noon we we're like this sucks <laughs> We could like quit. We gotta handle it. <laughs> like, there's so much more that has to be done. I'm gonna bribe my kids with money and like things. I'm like, please help me polish this thing up and make it look good for its heyday and help me work it out. So all these tools and stuff are everywhere because, well, we're about to rig it. I gutted my smoker craft. For one, the smoker craft needs to be gutted and re needs to be rebuilt. Like after all the skill knowledge we have and all the tools we have, we're gonna be able to really make that thing super awesome. So this is gonna be my super now boat, which I'll probably end up either giving away or sponsoring somebody with it later. That's what I'm gonna probably maybe do. Like a lot of these boats I'm gonna do, I'm gonna figure out some way to either give them away or sponsor key people with it. That's probably where this one will actually go, honestly. I have somebody in mind, but I'm gonna get my use out of it first before we before we send it on its way. Uh, but right now, yeah, we're rigging it all. I'll talk about the rigging in a second. Let's get, let's get down to the grit here. First off, I want to say that now that I put all this work and this obscene amount of work to get this refinished, I do never want to go through this again, ever. All I want to do is like wax it every once in a while, put some ceramic coat on it. This cover here, this is from RV Masking. And this is an actual affordable cover. Normally I wouldn't buy these covers because, you know, even though they work, they're expensive. And it's just, I would generally get like four or five tarps from Harbor Freight and just make that work. And then I would replace like four or five of them within a summer because you know, the sun just chews through those tarps. But this one is actually very cost effective and it's as good a material as you're gonna get anywhere else. I mean, you can look right at the material. It's legit. It's got vents, it's got clips. It comes with, it comes pretty nice. It comes to you in a box. I lost the unboxing footage but it's really good. We're gonna use this thing to cover this thing. And then because they're so cost effective, I probably will get like three or four more of these. Cause I got three or four boats. These could definitely go on. Yeah, I'm definitely putting this thing on here. That's like, it fits this bass boat perfect. This is for a 16 to 18 foot boat. That's like the range. And if it's this 16.4, 16 foot four inch, whatever this is, 640 LX. If it's this boat, perfect. Perfect, right on there. Couldn't fit it better. Couldn't ask for a better cover. Thank you, RV Masking, for this. I'll give you a link in the description below for this cover. It is very nice, cost-effective, and cheap. Hint at it for your wife so she can get it for you for Christmas. Whatever you gotta do, it's really good. I will say that officially. Very happy about that cover. Regarding the whole process here, though, it was the rubbing compound, then the restore. What I wanted was to find their step. They had steps. They had, like, step one, step two, step three, and step four. Like, they had... West Marine used to have this, these rubbing compounds that had steps. I tried to replicate that because I couldn't really find that. But generally, those are much nicer kits. They work out much better. Because I hadn't really touched paint or detailed anything in a long time since I was, like, a little kid. I used to detail cars. And then even then, my dad, my stepdad wouldn't let me, like, detail everything. He would, like, make, you know, his his skilled workers do most of, like, the serious work like this. Like, I was never able to, ever able to touch an oxidized car. Most of the paints now, the UV resistance 
resistant paint index, all that stuff is so good that you don't really see oxidation in cars anymore, like not to the way they used to be. So it's like, I haven't really had to restore anything like this in a very long time. But what happened is I, I tried. So because I wasn't really sure how, how rough this stuff would be, I tried the Restore Wax first. And then after two or three passes, again, think about like sandpaper, rougher, finer, finest sandpaper, like thousand grit sandpaper, this stuff, like super fine right you're trying to polish it like it's like trying to polish a rock into a diamond pretty much what you're doing so we use that what well, we tried we tried using the restore wax first because we, we weren't sure if that could get this out but after like two or three passes of hard rubbing it didn't do anything so then we knew we had to use the rubbing count compound and then the rubbing compound by itself was almost not enough like we had to hit this five or six times so how you're supposed to use this and we didn't use it right we found that out is uh you just keep rubbing it and yeah it's a little harsh at first you can feel the grit and then uh, you just keep rubbing it until it feels smooth and kind of slippery. And that's how you know that you've you've rubbed it to, and then you had to do it a few more times. So it took a total of four to six coats on each of these platform of the rubbing compound before we got it down to a nice, nice finish. Then we went over it with the liquid. We went over the store and then the liquid. We probably only just had to do the liquid, but we just tried to, we tried to like get it its best. And it just happened to go kind of like this. This stuff's just a little bit more, uh, the chemicals in it and the grit in it is just a little bit more than the wax. So we kind of just gave me that little finer polish before you go, because in sandpaper, if you go rough and then you try to go too fine, it doesn't look right. You have to go rough and then semi-rough and then fine and then super fine. And then you get that nice, nice gloss polish. That's kind of what we try to replicate. This is kind of not, I think there was, I was missing like two bottles to really get the whole thing. There's like, should be like a five-step process. I've been out of the detailing game for a while. I haven't done it in a minute. Don't know what I'm talking about. If you guys know what you're talking about and you know like what to do here, like please comment in the section below. I won't be offended. I'll post your, I'll pin your comment if it's if it's accurate and you're a very knowledgeable person. I always appreciate knowledge. That's how this whole thing works. We also got bass seats from Amazon in there. And we also got a bass cap box replacing that middle seat with like a glove box, which is really crucial because there's not a whole lot of storage in this boat. Kind of bothers me. And I feel like my most biggest pet peeve about this boat, the lack of storage. See this rod? That's a 10 foot swim bait rod for the best rod maker on the planet. And I can't stick that in here. I don't even know if you can stick a 6'6 six, six rod in here. It's like a six foot rod. I think this is a 6'6 six, six rod right here. And we, this is like a, I needed a rod for my son. Yeah, that would just barely, barely fit in the nose. That would kind of, that would kind of tuck in back there. It's like a little tuck in. We might be able to do a seven foot rod in here. So maybe some rods, not a whole lot. My big rods for sure just got to lay on the deck and we just got to suck it up. What else is new? That's what it was like on the other boat. All these tools and everything are to rig the boat. That's what's coming up next. I got the Ultrex out, 24 volt Ultrex, Humming 360, got the Flowrite kits, and we're gonna stick in a bass boat. Who knows what that's like? So we got extra stuff in here just in case it doesn't quite go like how we normally do because normally we kind of have our way with it. We, we developed the live vault into the whole boat ourselves and so it's kind of cheating because you don't actually have to it's not cheating but it is and, for, and in terms of like you do your own design you don't have to get around anybody else's design this is somebody else's craft i got to deal with it just like anybody else has to so extra parts from installing many live wells and now we got this thing the version 3 live well kit we'll be install we will be installing a version 4 inside that big giant aluminum boat i have back there then we have like quite a bit of wiring that we got it from the smoker craft. That's not even all of it. There's like more, but uh, yeah, I'll get to that another day. But the smoker craft has to be redone completely. This thing was like, all right, like it did work, but in the end, I think it was more trouble than what it was. And we just gave up on it. It didn't, it didn't go bad. It just was like, not very good. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't particularly care. It like vibrated our hands worse than just us rubbing through the whole thing. I don't know if it's just like being old that we hate this, but we, Richard and I did not like this gave up on it check out our graph mounts guys black friday is coming up these are pretty sick they're very nice and cost effective this is based off my design that i did a few years ago um when i don't know i think my smoker craft builds probably going on three years my my last renovation before you know i'm going to do another one a version three my version two smoker craft we did a something like this and then nate and i we talked about it and we based this off of that one to be affordable and cheap we we're going to do a diy kit where you could just kind of bolt it all together but he's like now i can build it in one piece and just make it very easy with ports for the wires and a step up so you can see both graphs he's actually going to release a new one probably right before black friday and it's going to be even sicker than this so i hope maybe he'll send me that one too but yeah this one's going to handle it pretty good it did very good had the, the three the we had the helix 9 gen 4 down here then we had the garmin echo map up here Ran the 360 and pan optics together and seamlessly they work together perfectly when you use them together because you could see a 360 view inside a cove of what you were looking at with structure then you could just point the pan optics at a structure and then you could see the structure i did have this thing the whole stick for it and i did like that but i also don't like it and it was more tedious and i'm just gonna honestly mount that pan optics right to the trolling motor and i know there's like a turret but i have to make like another turret 
just for it to work with this. And I'm not, I'm just not gonna do that. I'm going to just, I don't even know if I can put it on there. I don't know if I can put both of them on there. Maybe I'll have to run an, an additional thing. That would just make everything wonderful if I had to do that again. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't against this thing, but I was like kind of over it. But I will do it again. Maybe I'll make a nicer one that I can that I can weld aluminum. This is pre-welding aluminum. This actually worked pretty darn good. We took this out of like an old uh, 12 volt edge that I meant to edge that we broke. We took the freaking shaft out and made the shaft in here. Took the end off, clamped the end made this so it could slide and move crack and forth and we made the pull out of aluminum it was pretty dope it worked like a long time ago this guy sent me these things uh trim serum and sealant squill it's pretty much a really nice wax you would put on here and this, the trim serum is what's really exciting because this is super oxidized i threw 303 protectant all over it. i saturated it in 303 protectant i don't know if it did a whole lot for it but we, when i got it and i saw how bad it was i, I just saturated it until i could get to it so now that i can get to it i'm going to try and re-trim up the trim it up with trim serum and see how it works it's supposed to it's supposed to re kind of get a lot of that back up whatever as much as it can be got back up because hey man this is all technology i don't know how well this is going to last <clears throat> or if we can even do anything that can replicate it, but we did get the console top back up. All right, guys, that's all for right now. The next week, we will be rigging that whole thing and ripping off all the carpets. I'm just so terribly happy for that because you can tell the carpet is busted. That glue is completely dried out. So we'll have to try a few interesting tactics to get the old carpet glue in that old carpet, and then we'll decide what we're gonna do from there.